Hey everyone, thanks for staying. <laughs> um, all right, I hope you're good. How's your day? How have, have, have you been? Like, how's the day been? Are you tired? All good? Yeah, I'll keep it short, I promise. Uh, hopefully you have questions, but I will try, <laughs> I will try to not take more than 20 minutes uh, of the end of your day. Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about the growth of WordPress um, for the growth of non-English WordPress. <laughs> Let's put it this way. All right. So today, WordPress powers more than 23% of the web. It's been growing rapidly in recent years, and um, it continues to grow thanks to the efforts of a lot of contributors. I'd like to talk to you about one of the factors that has helped WordPress grow and uh, the people who contribute to that factor and how you can, if you are a plugin or a team developer, take advantage of some of the approaches that WordPress um, is taking to grow. A little bit about me. Um, as Luke said, I'm Petya. And uh, I work for Human Made, an amazing company that's based around the globe. We are fully distributed. It. And um, we do enterprise WordPress work uh, for big media and like large, large scale, scale projects. Um, I also run a small nonprofit company in Bulgaria called Open Media. It's a, not, not a company, it's a foundation, nonprofit, that tries to help independent media. Um, grow in the country and uses WordPress for a lot of its projects. Uh, I try to help the community by organizing WordCamps and helping meetup organizers get started. But most of my time goes to contributing to the amazing WordPress Polyglots team that helps WordPress get translated into more than 140 languages. So this talk, it deals with three main topics. We'll talk a little bit about how WordPress is spread internationally. And um, it will teach you a little bit about two terms um, that are important when it comes to translating software. Internationalization, it's so hard to pronounce this. Internationalization and, lo <laughs> and localization. <laughs> Um, and it will give you a few tips if you're like plugin or team developers on how um, how to grow your uh, international audience. So let's get started. WordPress and languages. Oh, what happened? All right, let's get back. Sorry about that. Right. So, in less than four years, WordPress grew 10%. How did that happen? Like, it's now powering 23 plus percent of the web. This data is actually from the beginning of April. 23.7 from the beginning of April. It was just 13% in 2011. How did we grow to 23.7 in less than four years? One of the reasons is actually the active translation of the software and the huge spread that it has among non-English uh, speakers. Okay, here's the beautiful slide. <laughs> so the world speaks more than 6,500 languages, let's say actively around 4,000. Um, very few of those languages though have like huge economic impact. Don't they? Like the top most spread languages um, are the ones that are on the screen, and English is not the first one. In fact, according to Ethnologue's 15th edition, Ethnologue is a uh, pretty cool um, linguistic website that monitors how languages develop. According to Ethnologue, English is, takes third place now after Chinese and Spanish. And as we know, like most software is written in English, right? Most software speaks English. WordPress is no exception. 
it's quite understandable. Like WordPress founders, Matt Mullenweg and Mike Little are from Houston, Manchester. So WordPress speaks English. But WordPress continues to speak English even though it's contributor mass. Like all the people and the developers that keep working on it uh, are not all English. And the truth is to grow globally for a software to just speak English is not enough because let's face it, you go to Russia, you go to China, you go to most of the Asian countries, people there don't, don't really speak English. It's like a redneck. Yeah, even to Italy, right? It's like, it's like you know, uh, if uh, a redneck goes to Japan and tries communicating with local people in English, so, how many languages does WordPress speak? A lot. <laughs> WordPress speaks more than 100 languages. And when I say speak, I mean it. Like, WordPress is fully translated into a lot of languages. There are 65 fully translated WordPress locales. That means that you can actually download WordPress and use both the front end and the back end in 65 different languages. There are 20 languages that are like a version behind and there are a lot of, a lot of languages that have been requested but are not fully developed yet. Here are the top WordPress languages where actually like after English, Japanese is the strongest WordPress language. German, French, Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, and Portuguese are the other very strong WordPress languages. But there are new locales be being requested every day, and to translate WordPress is not an easy task. There are more than 5,000 strings in WordPress front and back end. So those 65 languages that I told you were fully translated, those translations were all contributed for free by more, by more than 4,000 people since 2008. And those people are the WordPress Polyglots team. So the WordPress Polyglots team is the largest contributing team to WordPress. We consider even one string translation contribution. So if you want to contribute to WordPress, all you have to do is go to translatewordpress.org and translate one string. It's as easy as that. I am sure Jenny already mentioned that. <laughs> um, yeah, those are like WordPress translators can contribute as many strings as they want. All, all you ever need for that is to be registered at wordpress.org. We have translation editors, though, and those are people that are really devoted to a locale. Those are people that take care of the consistency of language, so that when you download WordPress in German, it doesn't both speak formal and informal German, you know, so that your users are not facing uh, both dialect, slang, and formal language. So translation editors put a lot of time and effort into those, and there are more than, more than 400, 300 translation editors for all the 145 locales. So what translation editors actually do? They have a little bit of a more advanced access and they can see all of the suggestions that translators make and they can change them accordingly or approve them or reject them based on if they're good for the overall translation of the language. So the team has been working for years, helping WordPress reach more non-English speaking people around the world. And in 2014, that actually resulted in the number of non-English downloads surpassing the English downloads of WordPress. And this was for the first time. What happened with WordPress 4.0? From all, from all the almost 14,000 downloads, Japanese actually had almost 3 million, uh, sorry, 13 million downloads, 14 million downloads. Yeah, I'm a little tired too. <laughs> Japanese actually had almost 3 million. And uh, 
combined, all of the non-English downloads actually surpassed the 6.5 million English downloads of the software. So, how does this all happen? How does WordPress become translatable and translated into all those languages? What is the locale? <laughs> Some of you are probably asking, asking yourself that question. I mentioned that word a lot. So a locale, uh, from a geographic pers perspective, a locale is a place, right? So from a software perspective, a locale is an ID used to select information associated with a language and or a place. Locale information includes the name and identifier of the spoken language, sorting uh, and requirements, currency usage, right to left or left to, li uh, to right direction, depending on the language. As you know, like Arabic languages are <coughs> uh, a right to left. If the language is horizontal or vertical. So to get to know how WordPress is translated, you have to know these two abbreviations. As mentioned, internationalization is like a mouthful. So, to shorten that, developers use I18N. If you've ever seen I18N anywhere in like links or anything related to WordPress, that's what it means. Internationalization. Same goes for localization. So, Internationalization means creating, developers creating translation-ready software, making your product, plugins, themes, software ready to be translated. And localization is the process of translating. So, what happens with WordPress is WordPress core developers make sure that everything WordPress says to a user on the front end and the back end is translatable. It's available for translators to have it in their own language. Th these two li uh, links at the bottom uh, give you access to the plugin developers and theme developers handbook on internationalization if uh, anyone is curious how that happens. So once software is made available for translating, it's in the hands of the translation teams. Those people don't need to be developers. You only need to have a good grasp of a language. All the teams that help translating WordPress live on makewordpress.org slash polyglot slash teams. And to become a part of the team, as mentioned, you have to just go to wordpress.org, translate wordpress.org, log in, and suggest translations. There are a couple of projects that you can translate at translate.wordpress.org. Uh, apart from WordPress itself and the WordPress admin. Where's the WordPress admin? Okay. So the second WordPress on the top row was meant to be WordPress admin. You can translate BuddyPress, BBPress, and different, different WordPress uh, plugins. Okay, that slide is all screwed up. <laughs> So, how do we grow like WordPress grows using localization and internationalization? The growth of WordPress means that the WordPress in industry nowadays prospers. There are like more than 30,000 plugins and 7,000 teams in the free WordPress.org repository. But around those products, those free products, there's a market of premium services and other services that is growing as fast as WordPress. The themes and plugins are an important part of the growth of the software, so WordPress developers know that they need to make translating those themes and plugins possible so that WordPress can keep growing. In WordPress 4.1, we saw the introduction of language packs. And nowadays, when you download WordPress, during install, you're able to choose from all of the available languages that are translated at translatewordpress.org. 
So the goal for internationalization of WordPress is actually for plugins and for themes to be available in all those languages too. For that to happen, like the idea is that when a user goes to the plugin repository or the theme repository, or even when a user searches for a theme or a plugin in their, um, in their WordPress dashboard, they can search using keywords in their own language, and they can find themes based that, that are available in the languages that they search in. In practice, that means making all 30,000 themes and seven, th uh, sorry, 30,000 plugins and 7,000 themes available for translation on translate.wordpress.org. The thing is, even though we got promised for this to happen in the next few years, this is an open source project. So if you're a theme or a plugin developer, you probably shouldn't wait for your plugin or team to be made available on Globpress to start caring about translations and making your product available for non-English users. So what, what can you do? I reach out to a couple of um, the more, the most popular, like the developers of the most popular plugins in the repository, and decided to see what they were doing to grow their international audi audiences. So, you probably know uh, WordPress SEO by Yoast. It's one of the most popular SEO plugins out there. And um, they're being particularly active about contributing translators and making the product available to a lot of people that would like to help. What they do is they copy the WordPress model. They have their own GlobPress install. GlobPress is the translation management system that uh, WordPress uses. So we also have their own GlobPress install, and they uh, make the products, actually not, not just uh, this plugin, but all of their plugins, they make them available for everyone that wants to contribute the same way WordPress does. Um, what's interesting about their approach is that they actually actively contribute from the dashboard, <laughs> which means that if you install their products and you try to use a language that, is not that the plugin is not available in, a message pops up that tells you this language is not fully translated, uh, this, like the plugin is not fully translated into this language, but if you want to, you can contribute. And they claim that since they started using this, they've, uh, they've seen a lot of growth into the number of contributors that help translate their plugins. Other things that they do is that they offer um, premium licenses for, for their, all of their products. Some of their products are, um, are not free. Uh, to all of the people that help them translate different plugins. How many of you have used MailChimp for WordPress? Awesome. Yeah. So MailChimp is a pretty amazing service, and MailChimp for WordPress is a, a plugin that allows you to kind of um, connect your MailChimp account with your WordPress install and um, actively uh, get subscribers to your MailChimp um, newsletters and other services that are, it has a premium version too. So with more than 20,000 installs, it's now available in more than 17 languages. It also relies on volunteers uh, for translations, but the difference is that it uses a premium web-based translation management service called TransFX where that, that's kind of similar to uh, GlobPress, but offers a little bit more props, let's put it this way, and is more actively developed. It's, it makes it easier, a little easier to translators uh, to uh, actually contribute. The most popular e-commerce solution for WordPress, WooCommerce, um, and all of the other plugins of um, Uthemes use TransFX too. The difference is they don't offer a lot of props to their contributors. 
But the thing is, the more relevant and important you are to an ecosystem, the more people will be willing to contribute to your product and be, become a part of it. Like, all of the WordPress contributors don't get a lot of props, don't get anything special, but the satisfaction of actually being a part of creating a product and making it available to a lot of people. So, how should we get started? My advice would be to get acquainted with the plugin handbook and the theme handbook, which have now uh, huge parts explaining internationalization and localization. Follow the instructions there to make your products available for people to translate. Then, make your products available for translation. You can either use Globpress and set it up on your own servers and make it available like yours does. You can also use TransFX. It, it, it's not free, unfortunately. Uh, it's kind, kind of pricey, but it assures that there is a translating community there that might be interested, already interested in helping out with your products. Or you can do the easiest thing. PoEdit is a free application um, that you can make available for your users and explain to them how to use it to download your pod files, to translate your plugins and themes, and then send you the, the files back so you can add them. And to get a sense of localization, come hang with us at makewordpress.org polyglots. Try translating a string of WordPress or any of the, any of the plugins that are available, plugins and themes that are available uh, at uh, translatewordpress.org. It's kind of fun. We have glossaries and like there are a lot of instructions for different, for different languages. It's kind of interesting to find out what approach the translation teams are taking into translating the software. For example, German has two different versions in WordPress. There's formal German and there's informal German. And there actually isn't any locale that's specifically for um, Austrian languages. Like, you speak German and I know that you, like Austrians use uh, High German for communication officially. But there are a lot of dialects and like different types of languages, different types of var var variants, I don't know if I can use that, that you can actually request. You can request a dialect. You can request WordPress is available in Klingon. Did you know that? There's a guy that asked me for a pirate locale for WordPress a couple of weeks back. So, <laughs> yeah, so why not make it available in a dialect that is spoken by a lot of people in Austria? You can do that. So what you can do at makewordpress.org slash polyglots is actually, there are a couple of things. You can join a team, there are a lot of teams, 140 teams. You can join one of them, or you can request to create the new one if the language is not available. Or there are a lot of, there's a list of locales that are not being supported right now. Somebody requested them and then never had the time to contribute back. So if you speak one of those languages, you can pick it up and you can resurrect it. The whole point is to grow, to grow a WordPress related product, you need to follow the ways WordPress itself grows. It doesn't matter if you're developing themes or plugins, everything depends entirely on people. WordPress is an army fighting for a great cause. It's democratizing publishing. So if you join the cause and support the goal and the community, you'll be successful. Surveys show that if a user has invested something in your product, like time, and energy absolutely count as uh, investment from a user point of view, there's a higher chance that they will think of the product as their own 
everyone that's ever contributed to WordPress feels WordPress is their software. I invest a lot of time and energy into contributing back to WordPress, and WordPress has become kind of a part of me. <laughs> it's a little annoying sometimes because I can't, I don't, you know, you can't get out of the feeling that you have to contribute more and more. So you become a product evangelist, and what every product needs is product evangelists. So translation is the easiest way to contribute. Translations are from a native speaker point of view, you know, you'd, you'd never consider them contribution. But for a lot of people, they're valid. So if you win your most devoted users by allowing them to become a part of actually creating the product and create your product evangelists, you will establish a strong connection in local communities and they will always be the ones that promote your product and believe in your product and help your product go. This is the same way WordPress wins its thousands of contributors. And as a result of that, powers 23% of the web. Thank you. Any questions? I'm not over time, right? Questions? Awesome. So, um, when you create a new locale, for example, Austrian German. All right. <laughs> if I wanted to do that, is, there, is, is it possible to start from another language as a basis, or yeah. do I have to start empty? No, you can export uh, one of the German locales, import the strings into the new locale, and only change the strings that make the difference between the languages. I'll give you an example. There's the British English locale. The Brits cannot stand the fact that WordPress speaks American English. They can't stand the howdy. They don't like the lack of use in all the words like color and, you know, all of those things. <laughs> yeah, right? There you go, Jax. So what they do, so what they do is actually they, they use the original strings and they look up, they filter all of, the, all of the words that they want changed, and they create a version of the language that, that works for them. Same goes for the Spanish. There are like seven Spanish locales, I think. There's Mexican Spanish, there's uh, Chile Spanish, there are a lot of different versions of Spanish. So yeah, you can use the base. You, you don't have to translate 5,000 strings if you want to start the Austrian language. <laughs> Other questions? Anyone? No? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Petya.